Good morning and welcome to today's Lord Mayor's Knowledge Miles Lecture on Sex, the Livery and the Civic City, presented to you by the Lady Masters Association in association with the Worshipful Company of Plumbers, the Worshipful Company of Tin Plate Workers and the Worshipful Company of Tax Advisors. Historically, the city required everyone who worked in the square mile to have the freedom of the city, which one could only obtain following membership of a city guild or livery, or by courtesy as a widow of a freeman. This changed in the 1830s as a result of government pressure. Then gradually people stopped joining liveries as it was no longer necessary to do so. Thus several liveries died or merged, others dwindled to very few members, some became gentlemen's clubs and others continued, while most stopped having women members. I'm delighted to introduce Eric Astari, who was chairman of the Lady Masters Association from 2017 to 2019. Erica has enjoyed a distinguished career as a tax lawyer, teaching and examining for professional exams, writing for tax journals, including co-editing the British Tax Review. She also worked in the Inland Revenue Solicitor's Office and her own specialist firm. She then retired onto the London County and Crown Court benches, where she worked essentially in common law, family and crime. Eric has also been involved in the livery in various guises since the 1980s, including as master of a few. And she wrote a research paper, Women in the Civic City and Livery, Women Aren't Persons, which we will share in the chat box so you can read that following the webinar. Now, before I hand over to Erica for the interesting stuff, I'm Charlotte Dorber Ashley, and I'm the manager of the FS Club at ZN in the City of London. We're going to be recording this session and it will be available for you to watch within 48 hours, along with the slide deck. And after the presentation, we'll be holding a Q&A. So please use the GoToWebinar chat facility to send your questions in to me, and then I can feed them into the conversation. Now, um, Erica, I'm pleased to announce the virtual floor is yours. Well, thank you so much. Welcome, everybody. Um, today's topic about women is really huge. So I've decided to be very upbeat and to skip the horrible historical background and deal solely with the post-World War I position. But I'll be happy to answer questions at the end. In, in 1918 and 1919, the government of the time passed two laws which, to an extent, ameliorated the position of women. The first was to give a few older, more mature women the vote. They had to have some property rights and they had to be over 30. And the second was the Sex Disqualification Act 1919, which essentially granted women equal rights despite being married. The areas covered in included royal charters, something which most liveries have, and also access to the professions and encouraged universities to grant decrees to women. The city, uh, slide please. The city corporation appears to have needed prompting about the impact of the act uh, because Lady Parsons, who had been awarded the freedom of the shipwrights due to first her amazing work in Tyneside during the First World War, and secondly, what she'd done for the shipwrights as its mistress um, in 22-23, and so she asked for the freedom of the city who told her to go away and she persisted quoting the 1919 act this resulted in married women being able to be made free of the city the city there's also a similar right for patrimony which the city managed to ignore i suspect and because nobody ever asked until the 1970s the liveries too carried on as before so that by 1970, there were only six of the original ancient liveries and only four out of the seven modern liveries which accepted women. Slide, please. However, a change was already beginning. The first step seems to have been taken by Mary Donaldson um, in the mid 60s. She was the wife of a barrister who later became master of the rolls and they lived in the temple just off Fleet Street. She went to Guildhall to find out how to be a local councillor. They told her that, they said, but you're a woman. And she said, what's the problem? And they replied saying that, um, yeah, you can, you can, but nobody will vote for you. But she proved them wrong. She got in, in no time at all, she was elected, and soon her abilities came to the notice of the Aldermanic Court, 
and she was persuaded to stand for it and from there she became aldermanic sheriff in 1981 and lord mayor in 1983. She was the first woman to achieve all of these things and by all accounts had a very good year save that some people found it rather hard to call her lord mayor so she acquired a charity box and imposed fines on those who infringed. The second woman Lord Mayor was not elected until 2013, 30 years later. Um, Fiona Wolfe, um, an international lawyer, had previously been president of the Law Society and was encouraged to stand for Alderman. She became our third female sheriff in 2010. The, the second and the fourth, Pauline Halliday and Wendy Mead, were both people who had to fight up to, through a pole, um, uh, not, not just the hands up in, in, in Guildhall. And thereafter, we've had five more women sheriffs. Um, but we are expecting, I hope, a new Lord Mayor next year. Um, slowly, more and I think, I think slide, please. Slowly, more and more women have been elected to Common Council and to the Aldermanic Court. We currently have 37 women on the council and eight on the court. The Common Council also has an annual election to thank an individual for all the work they've done over the years. And that person becomes Chief Commoner. The first woman who was elected Chief Commoner was Edwina Coven in 1987. And since then, we've had five more, the last being in 2023. Slide, please. Apart from civic work and holding offices, what else have women done in the last 54 years? Well, Dame Fiona took one look at the way the Lord Mayor's appeal worked and started again. Hitherto, it used to have to be made every year. This caused problems. It made it difficult to obtain regular donations because of the impacts and outcomes which could not be properly measured. And it's now a permanent structure with mechanisms for building in changes at appropriate intervals to its main focus charities. The change structure allows both the current Lord Mayor to have ownership and potential donors to understand what they're giving to. Not only that, but she created City Giving Day, which has grown exponentially over the last 11 years, producing huge sums for charity. City Giving Day doesn't just raise funds for the Lord Mayor's charity. Um, it also, the businesses who sign up often have projects of their own. But it's estimated that over half a million pounds is raised each year for various charities and good causes, and well over three and a half billion pounds since it started. Um, this year, we had over 600 businesses signed up. As if that wasn't enough, Fiona also held, and this is believed to have been the first, according to all the research I've done, uh, Lord Mayor's Ball, which has now morphed into the annual Sheriff's Ball. And she started the process whereby the Lord Mayor gives a specially designed teaspoon. I'm going to hold one up. This is the one that she did. It is a, um, a teaspoon with, oh, hang on, it's the wrong way around, isn't it? Um, with the Lord Mayor's coach on the back of it. Now, they were always given, they're designed to be given to the clerk of the company where the Lord Mayor or the representative is attending. Um, and each one is different. She also created some jewellery. And if you look at the little brooch I'm wearing, if I get it close enough, um, she does, it's, it's a sort of a little coach. Uh, on the mnemonic of the 686, which was her number for the year. And she sold those also for charity, and she sold the spoons for charity. And I'm sorry that no Lord Mayor since has sold the teaspoons for charity as well, because it would have been nice to have had a set. Um, the Sheriffs and Recorders Fund has, which is run, as you probably know, by the Old Bailey, is chaired by, has been chaired by women ever since 1969. Um, the first woman was Lady Bowater, who was the grandmother of our COVID Lord Mayor, William Russell, and the current uh, chairman is Sir William's wife. This charity helps prisoners and their families, former prisoners. On release, 
the prisoners receive a, a st staggering sum of 82 pounds 39 pence from the government and because they lack money education a job a stable family or a home over 70 percent reoffend, so their life is spent in and out of prison this fund helps create to break that vicious cycle and at the critical time a prisoner is released the fund will give small grants to supply a vital need it also gives larger grants to charitable schemes which work towards the rehabilitation of prison leavers um, slide please uh, many other liveries and city initiatives have been created and brought about by women such as alderman Alison Gowman runs the City Climate Action Group, which is a group which encourages everyone in the city to look at the way they run their lives and businesses and ask themselves if they can do it with less or no carbon usage. And over 100 liveries and guilds and related associations have now signed up for this. And she runs regular sessions to help people focus on how to improve um, and manage their uh, commitment to lower carbon usage. Her group inspired Denise Fellows and um, Hilary Lindsay to uh, uh, think about the Livery Food Initiative. This initiative aims to reduce food poverty. Food poverty affects a staggering 800,000 London children and their families. And the project works with City Harvest which has a Sarah Calcott as her as their CEO. And this takes high quality food um, about to go to waste and redistributes it to charities throughout London. And those charities in turn process it for the benefit of the food poverty families. City Harvest is a high impact charity which achieves a social return on investment of £11.90 for every pound expended. And by September this year, the Livery Food Initiative truck had delivered more than half a million meals, which is amazing. Slide, please. Pollinating London Together was another brainchild of a woman, here Heather Barrett Mould. And she linked with Sue Green uh, the, of the Wax Chandlers. We're losing our pollinators at a vast rate due to insecticide it's it's rare even to see a butterfly these days or a bumblebee or a wasp and the nighttime pollinators have been equally affected i can't remember when i last saw a bat their team seeks to help and find ways to bring back these essential pollinators before we all starve to death you will have seen the wonderful flower display in the temple moat sorry in the tower moat a couple of years back and this year they've held for the first time what is going to be their annual pollinator count in July and September. Um, unfortunately, we don't yet have their results, but I, I'm sure we'll be seeing them soon. Another woman, May Sim Lai, initiated and runs the Women in the Livery Group at the City Livery Club. And she also organized the first ever woman-only float to celebrate Fiona's Lord Mayor's show in 2013. No Going Back is another livery initiative and is supported by at least 40 liveries. Fran Finlater, who is a haberdasher was the, and the visionary founder of another um, help prisoners mechanism called Bounce Back, um, is the executive leader of the charity. And, and, and the charity itself trains and supports prisoners so they can work when their sentence is up. Slide, please. Wendy Mead um, is another, another person who's been deeply involved in helping things. And in her case, she took up the cudgels for Bart's when it was threatened to be um, removed as a hospital by the government way, way, way back. And so she was chair of the Save Bart's campaign, which successfully kept the hospital open and flourishing in the west side of the city. A new venture is one of fundraising for Trelaw's school. Um, Virginia Bond persuaded the Lady Mayoress this year to run a wonderful tea party at Mansion House. I was there, it was fantastic. 
And this, she says, is going to continue. It was fully sold out. Slide, please. The gold and silver wire drawers um, ran a very successful exhibition last year called Treasures of Gold and Silver Wire to celebrate their 400th anniversary in Guildhall. It was so successful, they were asked to keep it open for another couple of months or so, and they got roughly 9,500 visitors. The curator and designer was Karen Watts, who was honoured by the City Livery Club with their Root and Branch Award in 2024. Despite women masters still being a real minority, that they were just under 13.3% in the last decade, they've been taking the initiative of encouraging likely masters to get to know each other and about each other's liveries by forming pre-year groups and in turn encouraging others to run later years. Um, it's... <laughs> It's really difficult to make the contacts and GDPR certainly hasn't helped. But perseverance pays off for both the master and the livery at large because you just learn so much about everybody else and it makes your year as master much, much, much better. And you, you don't end up turning up to things where you don't know a soul there and you don't really know who you should be going to talk to. Uh, and so they were started essentially by Adele Thorpe and myself and um, we've now encouraged others and as you can see from the list here we've got a whole list of them going through up to 26, 27 at the moment and, they're be and they find them really helpful. I've been looking at the WhatsApp groups that I've been allowed to peek into. Um, next slide please. The Lady Masters Association was set up in 2015. Um, we'd, ha we'd, had a we'd had a sort of loose association up to Fiona becoming Lord Mayor. Uh, um, uh, but she and uh, our fifth sheriff, Fiona Adler, encouraged uh, us to, to create the association. And we run evening sessions each year to allow upcoming masters to prepare for their year and to ask for all the questions that they would like to know the answers to. And I still find it a really interesting session to attend. But it's not just women who are deeply involved with the library, the women who work their way through to the masters, it's also the other halves. The consort of the Master Chartered Accountants for 2015, Von Spofforth, founded with huge support from the then Lady Mayoress and many other women across the, the city. She found a thing, um, a, a body called City Consorts, and this is designed to help people whose other halves are involved with the livery, who are coming up to being master, and who um, would like to know more. And so they, they they meet up with each other, they get to know what's going on, they they deal with the um, what sort of clothes they should wear, how they should deal with the traditions of the city, like the Loving Cup, um, its history, and everything else. So that's been, I think, a really useful thing to have created. And, and I just had to mention the Mistress Glover's Flying Circus. Catherine Grimley, Grimley the current Master Glover, um, who clearly likes flying in things like biplanes, organised an amazing flying circus, as she called it. And she's raised just under £50,000. So if you go and look for it, you can give us some more if you like. Um, and she picked up the challenge to do, to do this so in a biplane. She did three aerobatic manoeuvres, a loop-the-loop, -loop, um, a barrel roll, and a stall, uh, flying it up to 550 miles an hour and reaching up to 3,000 feet. Well, I'd rather her than me. I think she was incredible. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed by that. Um, next slide, please. The liveries are also helping to encourage women. The plumbers, for example, have their own women in the livery section, and we use it to encourage new women members, but we also encourage women trainee plumbers. And one of the things we do is to support um, the competitions for learners. And there's a, a, a general learner competition, and there's a women learners competition really to encourage women into plumbing. And 
we attend the senior members of the plumbers attend all the heats of the women's group in order as, as part of the encouragement we've met seen some super work and met some amazing people as a result the international bankers ensure that they do regularly have women join their court and they look specifically every four years if they haven't had one by then the solicitors company runs a thing to help women to learn how to be more proactive in getting in business and they call it lucky girls um, but they make it very clear that those who take part are already excellent because they are city lawyers and you don't get there without being good and most companies are simply trying to get more women in i think for lots of reasons not least of which is um, falling membership roles slide please it no longer seems to be unusual to have um, one or more have more than one woman in a row. Um, several companies have had two women masters. The educators have had three twice. And the plumbers, if all goes well, will have three in a row starting next September. And the, the um, City Livery Club is about to embark on the same process as well. Many liveries report increasing um, female membership and also that having women in their livery uh, makes the atmosphere far better and also brings in new ideas which I'm hoping today I've shown you that they do and the recent survey that I did across the livery this summer indicates that across the various guilds and liveries women account for just under 23 percent of the membership slide please Women are also helping women who have inevitably, it seems, to suffer harassment, unrequested touching and other sexual approaches. The Lady Mayoress, Elizabeth Manelli, has become patron of a safer city. This is a much needed forum um, and it's looking to find ways to make it safer for the female sex to be both out and about and at home. And she's ably assisted there by two ambassadors, Sarah Cork and the former city police commissioner, who is Ian Dyson. The launch of A Safer City happened at the end of September. And amongst other things, it, dis it discussed the importance of having the right culture, the importance of culture in achieving strategic objectives and learning from focus groups. So there's there's plenty going on and women now appear to be welcome everywhere and they've taken up the opportunity with enthusiasm. Slide please. I, I've not looked at Lady Masters as such due to time, but as at today we have fielded, including our first Sylvia Tutt in 1983, 269 appointments from 257 individuals. Some like the indefatigable Princess Royal have been elected more than once. She's been master eight times and is the perpetual master um, of the Saddlers. Fiona Wolfe has recently finished her fourth. 269 is not a huge figure in the overall scheme of things. This year we've had 20 appointments as at today's date um but it's we've got 111 livery companies it's still very small um slide please right so as i mentioned earlier where we were 13.3 percent in the last decade um and in our first decade we were 1.1%. We had 22 members in that stage. Uh, and then we moved from 5.51% for the next decade. And, um, and in 2023, we achieved 18.02%. So I think all in all, slide please, it appears to have been a great success story. Thank you. Uh, but I don't think it would have happened if the women who are so proactive did not believe in themselves. And it's also clear that women need role models. 
the more women we have there in leading roles, the more likely it is that women are going to seek to join them. Having people like themselves in senior positions really helps others who feel rightly or wrongly that they're discriminated against. And it's not just women. The ethnic communities also need similar encouragement. And whilst today's talk is on women, it's so good to see them in their increasing numbers. Um, and I, I just wanted to mention before I, I shut, I closed down on this. A few years ago, I, before COVID, I was in a queue outside Goldsmiths um, Fair, uh, trying to get into Goldsmith Fair. And I heard one master talking to another. When do you think, said the one to the other, you'll have a women master? Oh, replied the other. Oh, not for at least 40 years. Hmm, said the first and changed the subject. I hope you will agree with me that they are missing out if they leave it that long. Slide, please. To end on a very jolly note, in the basket makers, there are three generations of women from one, fa from one family. I, I have not heard of any other, other long generations like that, but all women. And the youngest is having her birthday today, so I thought I would wish her happy birthday to Jennifer. And thank you. Thank you very much, Erica. That was very, um, really thorough and interesting. And happy birthday to Jennifer as well. Um, now we'll just go through to questions and um, keep putting them in the chat box and I will pass them on to Erica. Um, so Angela Squire has um, just made an observation that uh, she's a liveryman of the Worshipful Company of Secretaries and Administrators and they've just installed a Lady Master and Lady Senior and Junior Wardens. Um, so that's more good news. Thank you uh, for sharing, Angela. Now, um, Graham has asked, at around 23% of livery membership, do you know how this compares um, with the percentage in senior professional and administrative posts in London? No, I don't. I've not actually researched that um, because I was looking at the civic city and at the livery. I, I don't, I, uh, going one stage further into intercity businesses is just, I think, a stage too far for me to have mm -hmm. managed it find out those figures i simply don't know yeah it would definitely be interesting though i must say when um you mentioned that it was by 2020 that women were allowed to be members of all liveries i was quite shocked i thought you were going to say by 1980 or something so i found it astonishing that it was so recent well it it it, it, it took it took quite a long time really and it's if they began to open up slowly if you look at the paper that I wrote, which Charlotte will give you a link to um, at the end, you, you will see it, it did take quite a long time. And it, it was interesting because when you chat, when I chatted to people to find out how they got there, I mean, one person said that they're, she wanted to become free of the city. And the only way she could do that was by following her father's patrimony route. And to do that, she had to belong to her company, his, his company, which did not accept women. And so she threatened them with um, press coverage and they caved in. Um, another company, um, I'm just giving you two examples off the cuff. And another company uh, fought like uh, the, the then master fought hard to persuade it to ha let in women. Um, this was in the 80s, and it was considered to be so controversial that no women were taken in until about eight or ten years later. Oh, wow. It has just taken a very long time. And I mean, this sort of relates on to that. Um, so Juliet um, said, what are the um, barriers that exist to women joining um, livery companies and what can be done to remove some of these? There are no longer any barriers. All women are, um, w w all livery companies now have their um, companies open to women on an equal basis with men. The biggest problem you will find is 
uh, jumping over the hurdles of persuading the um, interview panel as to why it should be you that joins and what your interest is in that particular company because different companies have different approaches and um so just a sort of comment really um christina has said um it could also be worth looking at the number of women as clerks of livery companies as there's more um than you might imagine there well it it has grown I mean, certainly um the um the weavers had a woman assistant clerk and when um mary donaldson was lord mayor they were so worried about her being the only woman at their dinner that they invited their assistant clerk to be there as well um the another company had a, an outstanding assistant clerk but felt they actually couldn't convert her into a full clerk when the then clerk um, but I think most companies now would have no problem with having women clerks that they've had women clerks they've seen women clerks around and they are absolutely outstanding um, and then Sandra has said what more can we do to encourage to encourage men to nominate more women to become master or prime warden because obviously women are still outnumbered so we need the men to sort of you know, well, well, to I, them inside and... there's a number of factors I, I think and one of the factors is that in order to get yourself appointed to the court you need to show that you are working for the company and one of the things you need to do is to be proactive and volunteer for committees and then do a good job it's only if you are seen to be enthusiastic that you're going to be considered for the court of your company. So I place the onus back on the woman to put herself forward. And it's not difficult. You join something, you want to play an active part, for heaven's sake. That's always been my approach. Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, I, I wonder if some women are put off before because there's not as many women there so they'll feel they're outnumbered and that maybe some of them feel they're not quite wanted but I guess that's changing and it takes um obviously it's taken brave strong women to change everything in society to make it more equal so um, it's taken a long time you know we're living with a what the Normans brought in removed all the rights which women had before the Norman conquest. And they were a very male dominated society, which sort of went from the king downwards through his lords and their sons. And it, and that that's when we, we got, got into this male domination in, in England and Wales. But before then, I mean, women had quite a lot of power. And for example, Canute gave married women effectively the rights to the running of the money in their households oh, that, wow. was in, that was in a thousand ad that's very interesting to know just also about another sort of celebration is um agnes xavier phillips um who's uh, live with us today is the current master of the Worshipful Co Livery Company of Wales yes, and yes. she is the sixth lady master and the first um, Asian master. Well done Agnes. Now um, we have another liveryman of um, Valerie of Painter Stainers um, and she became liveryman of Painter Stainers in 2008 um, but they only allowed women in approximately 2006. And she said, at the time, my children were very young, so she was unable to attend many events. Um, and this is a great point, actually, Valerie. She said, it does prevent women from progressing to court assistant roles if they can't get to those evening events. And, you know, sadly still, it's the women who do bear the brunt of the childcare arrangements, so it's hard for them to get to the evening events, which is a real shame and obviously holding back progress there. Well, it's a tough one, isn't it? And you need to look very, I mean, we had long discussions before we started our family because I was adamant 
that father should know the child as well as mother. And we completely restructured the way we ran our family in order that we could do that. That's fantastic. I think a lot more couples should do that. Um, Dr. Dorothy has said that um, we need to educate the city men that when a woman is master, she is not the mistress. She said as a past master, she's constantly having to correct um, some of these ignorant men. I don't know if you ever had that experience. Um, no, I, I haven't. <laughs> I don't know why. No, I mean, my husband thought it was hilarious to be the mistress tax advisor. Told everybody. <laughs> Oh, I do. I mean, you do always. I've, I mean, I've had situations myself at um, conferences when I've been, you know, sort of told stop from going into a meeting saying that I should be at the spouses program, wherever that is. And, you know, you do hear of it as well with um, female prime ministers getting confused and getting told to get off the prime minister um, transport and get on the um, bus for the spouses. I know that happened to Julia Gillard, uh, who was prime minister of Australia for a time. And New Zealand did have a, when Jacinda Ardern was New Zealand's Prime Minister, we had a first man mm. or first, whatever you want to call him. And he was also the main caregiver of the baby. And I think the media had a lot of fun with that as well. Some of it in quite disrespectful uh, tones. Um, now, Bob has said, do you think it would be helpful to survey the gender and ethnic mis mix of livery companies and publish the results? I did. Um, oh, you did. Oh, fantastic. Um, and well, I, I, I didn't do the ethnic. It was quite clear that nobody had that information. Mm. But I did do the male, female, and that's where I got that figure from. Mm. And I circulated um, the 110 livery companies who were disposed to give me their results. Okay. Is this would this be is this information available? Yes, it's um, I, I could let you have it, but yeah. I, 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 I circulated it to all companies. It was done on an anonymous basis, so you cannot tell from mm -hmm. the way I've reported uh, what company has what percentage. Well, that, yeah, well, um, yeah, because Bob's quite interested in that, and I just think a few other people will be, so we can um share that with the audience afterwards when we share the video recording. And As I understand it, it, it's the first time any uh, that sort of survey has ever been done mm -hmm. i had one company object vociferously to it um but there we are so maybe yeah well if we don't know the current situation we can't really improve can we um now shane um has said you mentioned uh, briefly obviously ethnic minorities in relation to being unrepresented underrepresented in the liveries are there other underrepresented groups such as um he hasn't mentioned but i wonder if he's perhaps referring to um people with disabilities um and, you know i'm not quite i'm not quite sure i i, I don't know i mean I, there are a few people with disabilities around the around the livery and i, I certainly there's a we, we have a wheelchair bound person in the um in the plumbers we also used to have the longest living ever heart transplant patient in the plumbers oh, um, wow. um he, he sadly died a couple of years back but um the yes and our, 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 our lovely girl in the plumbers um does a does a huge amount of work for the plumbers and i think for the city livery club as well but the it, it is a problem i mean for i i was once told by um an ethnic minority barrister how difficult it was to get into the old bailey when he was going in to deal with his clients because they assumed because of his color that he was a criminal you know the, <laughs> you should be you should be going going, going in the other entrance <laughs> oh, so, you know, so people do have their people from all sorts of backgrounds yeah. do have their problems mm -hmm. and you just have to you have to fight your way. Yeah. You have to yeah. be yeah, you just have to stand your ground and say this is where I'm coming. Yeah. And if you stand if you do it d toughly enough, you'll get there. Yeah, that's very good advice. Um Maria said that there's a list of masters um who are from ethnic minority backgrounds. 
Um, and she was actually the fourth woman to be master glass seller in 2023 and the first Sri Lankan to be a master of a livery. I mean, I think one thing that um, I... Yes, Mira and I put together that paper. Uh, oh, well, and, we're, that's... and we're trying to add to it. That's because it's actually, it's actually a very difficult to put down ethnic minority from just names, because a lot of the names are very sort of what you might call English names. Mm. Mm. Um, um, and, and you simply can't tell. So yeah. you need photographs or you need people to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I must say, I mean, there is that obviously that old perception probably by people who are not in the city of that it's, um, you know, a sort of older, very much male, um, white base. But I mean, I've been quite surprised and impressed this morning by the amount of women masters um, and ethnic minority masters, I know there's a long way to go, but as you and as you said, the progress is happening. It's just slow. It's slow, and people don't know about it. So it it it, it takes time. But I mean, I, I've been really pleased to see uh, on, on the ethics the number of, of people coming through, and there are quite a lot around at the moment. Uh, and, and and yet it is it's taken such a long time. Although I I was told by somebody who had done some research that we actually had an ethnic minority Lord Mayor back in the seventeen mid seventeen hundreds. Oh gosh! But you see, um, so but that wasn't it wasn't a problem then. Yeah. It only, yeah, yeah. It, it only appears to have become a problem um, in the fifties and sixties. Actually, this is. Um, Fascinating. Uh, Veronica, uh, the company of entrepreneurs has had two female masters and has a very diverse membership. So they do an annual diversity, equity and inclusion survey, which, which looks at demo, demographics, um, including gender, age, ethnicity, disability, neurodiversity and social mobility factors. Um, and the last month they presented the event as a sort of pocket guide of good practice and they're mm -hmm. happy to share um, their experiences. Um, thank you, Veronica. I'm sure a lot of people would be really interested in that. I think we're sort of coming to the end of time, but I think we can sneak in one more question here. Um, James has said, what role do you think the expansive membership of Freemasonry in the city and livery plays in limiting the progress and representation of women? Well, the big problem with masonry is that women can't be members. And I, I know that nowadays you can allegedly have a, a women's um, Freemasonry group, but I recall back in the 60s, my bank manager's wife decided to be a, 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 um, a, a, a woman mason. I think she was. they were out in Essex somewhere. And he was heavily lent on to get her to leave it because otherwise he would be evicted from the masons now they may have changed their minds since but the fact is the freemasonry is a huge male club and with massive interlinks across it women a don't have that sort of time because they have other commitments with family and expectations at home and and and, and b you can't compete with it really so all women can do is to do their best to create their own circles and to create circles within the livery. I mean, the livery works really well if you actually take make the effort with it, and it's fun. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much uh, for sharing your time um, and research with us today, Erica. It's been really um, valuable and enjoyable and I think that the takeaway is for people if you're not if you are involved in the livery keep um keep going keep going keep making your voice heard keep connecting and if you're not perhaps um research and think about joining one as well um there's been lots of positive comments coming in and um, just thanking you very much there um for all of your um, efforts this morning, Erica. There's a lot of um, applause and people saying they really enjoyed it and that it was excellent. And uh, just before we leave you, we've got some more lectures coming up um, before we get to the end of the Knowledge Miles series. 
um, turning to green steel on um, the 31st of October. And then we're going back to the early railway age um, on the Monday the 4th. And then talking about AI and how that can um, perhaps improve our health in the future on the 6th. So thank you everyone uh, for logging in and contributing to the discussions this morning and wishing you a good rest of the day. Thank you. Okay, bye.